Hi guys, welcome back to Real Therapy Fishing. Um, we've been asked uh, a couple of times on how to set up a rod, uh, you know, set the reel up um, and that sort of thing. So we're going to do a quick sort of video today just to show sort of amateur sort of fishermen, you know, if you just... Beginners really? Yeah, beginners, beginners guide, beginners, yeah, yeah. Beginners guide just to sort of um, get, get yourself going really. Um, so we're going to set this up for Sea fishing, I guess. We'll yeah, do, we'll do, do a... sea fishing. Yeah, and then uh, we'll do a beach caster. So you stay on the beach caster, and then we'll go from there. So, first of all, you're going to get obviously you're going to buy your your rod and your reel, um, and it'll probably come. A lot of them now come pre um, spooled up, don't know, with with, yeah. with the line. Uh, we do prefer to use braid. We want to put braid on this one anyway. So we're going to take this. Imagine this is a new reel. We're going to take this um, monofilament off and then we'll reload it with braid, so we'll show you how to do that. So we'll start by just taking this line off. So yeah, as you can see, that's the bail arm. So just run, your, your line would run through there and it'd run up the rod that way. So we're gonna take this line off and then we'll show you the, the components of the reel. Right guys, so I've just taken all the old line off of this reel. Um, like I said, if you buy a reel and it's already preloaded with with um, fishing line, go ahead and use it. Not a problem. We personally prefer to use braid, so yeah. that is obviously, like I just mentioned, the only reason why we're actually going to change this reel over and also to show you how to to sort of put new line onto it. I mean, generally we sort of re-spool ours probably every year anyway, wouldn't we? I guess yeah. it depends on the use. It does. If you're using it twice three times a year then maybe you probably get away with it a couple of years it the only thing is it, it sort of tends to where it's been on the reel it tends to sort of tangle up and it will just become like a big long loop and let, until you've got your weight and everything on there to pull it tight so line can be a bit sort of a bit sort of funny like that but braid is it's a lot easier actually it is it? yeah it and braid doesn't like like this you would not get that with braid no it's just more of a You'd, you'd just be coils up on the yeah. floor, it wouldn't be all, all in a big bunch mess like this. So, so what we'll do now is I'll show, I'll pass this over to Dylan, um, and Dylan will show you the different components of the reel, and then we'll start spooling up and put some new, new line on it. So, when you receive your reel in the box when it very first comes, it will come like this with the handle um, collapsed, I suppose. Collapsed, yeah, bent basically. So, what you do is, is you've got this little adjuster screw here. So, unscrew that and that will wind out the arm of the reel and then just tighten it the opposite way I think some of these are interchangeable as well aren't they you can they, change you can the side can't yeah you? yeah so this one here is is that one yeah you so can I think change. you can change that and put up so if you're left-handed or right-handed that's it away you go also some reels will come with a spare spool um, and how you change that is you undo your drag Like so and that pops off and what this allows you to do is uh, you could fish with braid on this one say and mono on this one or 20 pound line 60 pound line whatever, whatever you want it's great, it's great isn't it if you're out fishing and you suddenly think oh there's big fish down there that's you it quickly change you know change your spool over and it is a quick way i mean obviously you've got to re root all your rod haven't you really? that's right but, yeah you know, at the end of the day it's only a five minute job so and these here, if don't know if you can see that, they need to be able to line up. So in the future I will be doing a how to service your fishing reels. So uh, I will be taking it all apart, showing you all the gubbins on the inside. But for now, to get fishing, that's all you'll need. Okay, so now we're on to rods. We're ready to mount our reel to our rod. So 
this one here you get lots and lots of different uh, mounting options so this one here for example you place the reel into the slot there and this has got a slidey um, catch to it so you put your butt of your rod in, uh, your reel in slide that down so it fits tight then that simply clicks and that's that one another variation is just a screwing type and this is where this piece here just screws up so it's this black piece here with the as you can see like a thread on it that will just screw up and then your rod your reel will just come out obviously this is fixed onto our reel we normally leave these fixed on and again you just pop pop the back the back end back in again and then tighten that bit right down tight onto your reel and that's it once that's nice and tight that is not going to come out of there okay guys so there's different types of um, fishing line like I've just mentioned we do like braid uh, that's what we sort of use something along that lines so that's something I that's a 60 pound line um, again there's some more there this is actual mono um, again 60 pound and we'll show you a nice quick and easy way how to spool it onto your reel okay so we could just got the uh, reel connected onto the rod um, all I use is the first uh, butt section as long as it's got one eyelet that's all you want so now we move on to the most important section and the one I mess up with the most because I always put it and then I forget to uh, put it through the eye so <laughs> always go through your eye of your so uh, straight off of the spool straight off of the spool like that yeah. straight through the first eyelet second most important thing is your bail arm right so your bail arm has got to be triggered right you've got it there it needs to be cocked like that Okay, that's the most important thing, and I'll show you why in a minute. I'm just going to do. You can do whatever knot you want to do. I've just done a simple slip just knot. Just sort of get you started, I suppose. That's isn't it, it, yeah. And then that pulls down tight, like so. And now I'll just do a simple overhand knot. As I say, you can do whatever you want to do with these knots, it's not a problem. You can do a granny knot if you want. I mean, the more line you put on here as well, the less like you are going to come to the end of it, isn't it? Yeah, so you really, really come to the end of it. Try off tag in. This braid is very, very tough stuff. Trim off the worst. That will fold down. Right, so now we're ready to start spooling. This is what I was saying about that bay alarm. Because when you now flick it back over, the line there runs smooth with that roller. See, if we, if we hadn't have done that, there'd have just been uh, the other side of that bail arm and obviously when you turn the handle, nothing would happen. Right, some people um, put their braid overnight in a bucket of water. Um, personally, we don't bother. Uh, the idea of it is so it runs on the spool a bit nicer, a bit neater, um, and it's not so thin because it's already wet, you see. So sort of loosen it up a bit, I guess, isn't it? That's it, it yeah, yeah, but we, we've never bothered and all of our reels work, so that's what we do. Um, what you need to do is keep the line nice and nice and tight as you're spooling. So braid can cut you and it will give you a nice friction burn. So what I do is just get a, a cloth and hold the braid up onto the line as close to that as possible. Like so. And then reel away as if you have caught a fish. That's it, yeah. Uh, you need to tighten up your um, drag. And then just reel away. So as you can see there, it's spooling on nicely. Just keep that pressure on so it's nice and tight. Because if you don't keep it on, all you're going to do is basically bird's nest it. So... And as you can see, the, rear, the spool is backwards and forwards, and that's just as it's um, playing all the line onto it. And it's all going to be nice and neat as well. So 
So how much braid would you put on there, Dylan? Is it you fill a thing right up or? I normally fill them right up. It depends on what I'm fishing for, really. Obviously, you don't want to put too much line on there because of it, you know you will end up just coming off the spool. That's it. it so. Yeah. I mean, if I'm boat, if we're boat fishing, you don't need as much. Depends on how deep your water is. Um, for beach casting, I tend to put the beach casters um, quite a way up. About so three quarters full or something. Like that. About three quarters, yeah. Just just so you, that lip there, you just don't go over the top of it. So I'd stay a couple of mil down from that top uh, rail there. Yeah, maybe so we're nearly there on this one. Don't take much, does it? Actually, no. But that is a that is a. You wouldn't cast all that. Put it up, mate. And there we have it, that's probably where I'd about go to, so. So it's just a quick intro of how to change your line on a, on a reel, yeah? Yep. Right, as I'm just winding up the last bit of the braid, uh, you can notice there, this is a line clip. And what this does is, is when I get to my last bit of braid, it's quite difficult, but flick your finger around. Well, if you've got nails, unlike me. Yeah. There you there go. There, yeah. So that, that just holds your line nice and tight. I mean, some people, they'll, they'll put an elastic band around the line. Um, basically, just use whatever, to be honest. But we use them because... Stops it coming off the spool, doesn't that's it? That's it, yeah, yeah basically. It stops it from spooling off and leaving a big tangle and mess in the back of your car or, or even when you're fishing even as well, isn't it? So. Yeah. Okay, so we've got the first section of the rod there. We've got our first rod ring and we've got our reel. Uh, the good thing with this is, is having your first ring, you know where the rest of the rings are going to go. I'll explain this now. So, you got piece one, piece two. Sometimes you get three piece rods, don't you? You can get three, even. that's it, yep. Yeah. All that does there, it slots in. Some of them, this bit here goes over the top of them. Some bits of these goes in into them. So just work out what way that goes in. The most important thing, if we can get the camera down on that line there. Yeah, yeah. I can just about see that, didn't you? There, yeah. So there's the first. There's the first ring. Yeah. There's our second ring. So what we need to do is, is line up our first ring and our second ring. So they match together, so the line will run completely free down them hoops. And what I do is that, just get my eye in and make sure they are dead in line, which they now are. And our line will run freely then between all of the uh, eyes of the rod. And obviously when you're casting, it's all in one, you know, it's, it's streamlined. All in it? one motion, yeah, that's yeah. it, yeah. You don't want that to be cock-eyed or anything. That's it, Otherwise yeah. Otherwise you'll have a bit of trouble. And obviously it'll wear your line as well, won't it? Yeah, on the very, rings. very quickly as well. Okay, so it's time to put the line through the eyes. So, like we've done with this catch earlier, undo it from there. Right? And what you need to do now is put this line through underneath the bail arm, right? So whenever you're fishing, your line always needs to come through this roller. So if you're underneath the roller, like this, when you go and spool your reel, let's see there? Nothing's happening, but with that, it just picks and collects a line for you, doesn't it? Through there, exactly. You've got then that will then take your line basically. So what I like to do is, is this is again just personal preference, but some people undo their drag to pull the line out. But what I do is, is this feature here is called a back wind. So it either flicks that way, and it'll spool freely or you flick that there when you're actually fishing and that'll stop basically you, you can't do nothing so undo that and it all spools out nicely or well, you could even just flick the bail arm off again couldn't you if you wanted to you could flick, flick the bail arm yeah that's it it's it all just personal preference really yeah I, I, I tend to do the bail arm option actually I just tend to flick yeah, it off yeah you and can do the only thing I would say with doing the bail arm method like when we've been fishing Hayton Pier before and yeah. we've got a big large gust of wind yeah. it, it does tend to uh, yeah, your fringe, line ends up yeah. going half a mile down that way that's the only problem with the bail arm yeah but again it's all just personal preference so 
So there you go, you get your rod eye, and it goes through the eye of your rod, down to the next one. Again, it doesn't go through there, it goes through here. Some of these eyes have um, sort of rubbers on them, don't they? They do, sorts, yeah. This is this is quite an old vintage rod, this. But it's a good rod, though, isn't it? That it one? is a good rod. It's a lovely rod, yeah. Yeah, as I say, like, like on our boat rods there, they've got plastic eyes, just as you can see on them. Some have metal like this one. And some have rollers there, that like our shark rod. Oh, yeah. So that's a, that's a totally different uh, kettle of fish, that is. There we go, we're just going through the top ring now. That's a plastic one. Because that there is where your most tension is. And what you want to do is as well is you want to inspect your rods like once a month or after pretty much after every fishing trip really. Just make sure they're not damaged. Because uh if you get a big fish on and that's damaged. It gets a lot of wear, doesn't it? It that, does. That, like you just said on that last ring. Because it's pulling down like that constantly all the time. Yeah. It's pulling on that main rod eye, so. And like we said, with braid, sometimes it doesn't sort of tend to sort of chafe it too much, but with mono, it does, doesn't it? It, it does, yeah. Sort of it really can wear, wear your line, way, yeah. sort of. And again, it depends how much you fish, doesn't it? So that's it, so I just pull a good amount through, probably about four foot of line, and then we'll move on to the next section. Okay, so now we're on to the next section. We've got our line running down from our top eyelet. Just four foot, just make it easy for yourself. And here we have the end of the line. So, some people, they'll just tie a hook on, or they'll do a sliding ledger like this, and then they'll just put the hook on, that's absolutely fine. Um, but again, what we do is we put a sliding ledger on, like so. I'll go into a bit more detail about this on the uh, rig making series, so, if you want to go through and check them videos out, there's a bit more detail on there of why we use them and, and how we use them. So, got our lead clip, and that goes onto there. Again, you can use any knot. This is the knot I use, and again, the knots are on my rig series. Just for your information, that's called the cinch knot, isn't it, that one? Uh, yeah, the cinch knot, yeah. I tend to use the sort of blood knot, don't I? That blood, knot. yeah, that's it. Again, just wet it down a bit and pinch it tight. There we go. So there we have it. This is how we spool our rods and our reels ready for our fishing trips. Okay guys, so Dylan's just showing you how to set the rod up. Um, there's various ways of obviously attaching your rigs and Dylan's shown different rigs in the videos that we've done previously. Um, you can put your rig onto there. Some of the rigs have the weights on the end of them, so you won't need this sliding uh, ledger bit here. But just for this sort of um, bit that I'm gonna do for you now, just on casting it really. So to actually cast the rod, I'm gonna to have to I'm I'm gonna to have to underarm flick this because the garden isn't long enough and I'm gonna end up putting that lead through my next door neighbour's window. So <laughs> I'm gonna to have to be really careful. So I'm literally gonna show you how. So that's your bail arm, as Dylan said before. What you do is you get your finger and bring that up to the top like that. You then take your bail arm off. And if you watch that weight now, and if I let go of the, the line, away it goes. Okay? So bail arm goes back on. Again, the line goes for there. I like to personally hold it there and reel it back in again until it's free and away you go. So when you're casting, make sure you bring the, the roll a bit to the top again. Take your bail arm off and then what you do is you would, obviously with a beach caster, sometimes on a boat we just start, we just flick it underarm, don't we? Mm. As you would cast, you'd just release your finger. As the weight comes sort of probably 45 degrees uh, from where you're standing upwards, that's when you'd let go of it. I'm just going to show you a quick demo on the, an underarm, and that is just to literally just flick it like that. And then that'll be, that's sometimes what we do on the boat, we just flick it out and then line up to the top again, and that's it. And then obviously you just retrieve your, your weight in your rig when you want to bring it back in again. So 
So it depends what type of fishing you're doing as to what weight you're going to need. Um, on the boat, sometimes we just use little, I believe that's a three ounce, it's been bashed along the bottom a bit. Yeah, that's a three ounce weight. It depends on the run of the tide, doesn't it? If it's yeah. sort of slack water, we can get away with using something quite light. Um, we have put these on before and they're a, they're a pound weight, a 16 ounce weight. Um, we've been sitting out and it's the tide has been running really fast. So on the boat, we can get away with sort of, you know, six, eight ounce, depends on again what what we sort of what we're fishing in so yeah for beach casting i mean you can use again plain plain heavier weights or the grip of weights that sort of as you've casted it in hits the seabed and as you put it towards it sort of grip in and it'll bed itself in the sand or in a shingle or whatever and that'll sort of keep your line nice and tight and then you'd have your rig running off and obviously the fish comes along puts it and away it goes so there's just a few different sort of types of leads that we use um again we've sort of sort of mainly really for the boat but um yeah they're they're the ones we use really aren't they Dylan so they are, yeah okay this is a, the probably the most basic rig um that you can use for pretty much anything I mean we use this mo mostly for the boat I've used it personally for beach fishing as well um a lot of people would go against you saying that because a lot of people like things clipped down but um, to have this running is absolutely fine. I mean it's a beginner's thing as well, it's, it's ideal isn't it? Yeah that's right, it's not a problem. So what have you got here Dylan, you've just got just a... So I've literally got a swivel tied on yeah. to one end of mono, uh, this is 60 pound as well because um, if we're casting a 6 ounce lead you at least want 60 pound so it's the ten percent rule. If you've got three ounce, you at least want thirty pound. Four ounce, forty pound. Five ounce, fifty pound. Basically, you get you get my drift. So you've got a swivel, sixty pound, Asso Ultra Flex. And about a foot of, foot of that, is it? About a foot. Yeah, you yeah. can do it basically however you want it. I mean, the tote fish and the tote traces I like a little bit longer because they do tend to wrap up in themselves and they will get. Um, the skin's quite coarse, so you want a nice, decent amount of line before it hits your main line. You got a 2 0 hook there. Uh, again, you can tie on whatever hook you want for whatever species you're going to catch. So, you've got our lead weight there on our running ledger. Uh, this is why we put this on because you can unclip, clip this rig on, or clip a different rig on as well. Then, can't that's you? it, and then you've got that. And then again, as Dad says, if you want to clip a different rig on, if you're getting bored of that rig or the fish ain't showing on this type of rig and you want a different one, say a two-hook flapper, take that off and then put your two-hook flapper one back on again. It really is that simple. And Dylan's shown you that in previous videos as well, hasn't, haven't you? So yeah, the, it, it, we, I do go into more detail, as I say, on the other, on the other videos, on the other rig-making videos. So if you check them out, you can see in more detail of how we do this. But you'll catch most fish on this sort of rig as well. Because this it, rig, yeah, it's just on the bottom as well, isn't it? So That's bottom, right. Bottom rig, um, yeah. So pier fishing, boat fishing, beach fishing, any fishing, all types of yeah. fishing, isn't it? I mean, most fish will feed on the bottom. So That's you'll, it, yeah. And you've got, you've got a good chance with this. And as I say, this is a smaller fish because obviously this is a smaller hook. But again, when we're doing big uh, tote fishing, we'll use bigger hooks. So you can see the size difference there. Hopefully, you've got an idea now of getting your rod literally from the packet, um, setting it up, and ready to fish. And again, actually, this is sort of um, similar for you know freshwater fishing as well, isn't it? Yeah. Just different weights, and obviously you've got floats and stuff. But we will, as we go through this year, we will be doing a lot of fishing in, in the river, won't we? Yeah, as well, yeah. so we show you some different sort of um, float setups that we use. Again, mm -hmm. even ledgering. Um, yeah, you know yeah. for bream and all sorts so yeah. we'll do all of that as well um, and again uh, if you want to know anything or would like to know anything uh, please leave a comment down in the comments because we literally we read every single comment so you won't get missed so if you want to know something um, ask away so just a quick little uh, intro on the baits that we use around this area um, our main go-to bait is really squid isn't it squid, squid is a good yeah. Our water around here is quite sort of murky, so a lot of the time the, the fish, you know, they really do need to have a good scent on it. So 
mackerel, things like that, herring, we use all them sort of uh, baits. So going back to squid, that's the one we use. That's our all rounder bait really. Yeah, isn't it? yeah. That'll I mean, catch us from a from a white in up to the, the smooth ounce. Well, that's that we on as well, haven't we? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, up to the so that pretty much any fish in the ocean around this area will take squid. And then we use ragworm. We use a lot of ragworm in the summer, yeah. um, especially for the bass. They they sort of they, love, know, it, they yeah. love they love the ragworm. Lugworm again, mainly in the winter we use that, don't mm. we? More of a winter bait really around yeah. here. Um, we use herring. Herring's a great bait for skate. Brilliant bait for and skate. And same as bluey. Bluey's yeah. a great great bait for 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 the skate. Um, mackerel we use a fair bit of mackerel don't we mm, yeah and again yeah, that's a sort yeah. of we do have a lot of crabs around here and they do tend to yeah. to go for the mackerel a lot mm. so it's try and we try and keep it off the bottom a bit more don't we but yeah um what else do we use bait we wise use peter crab yeah we peter crab peter crab yeah um, we ain't had many of them this year have we we haven't no we've uh, been using foreign peeler crab actually lately haven't we for the yeah. uh, smoothies the other day but again they only took squid so yeah i had one one fish on peeler crab um, prawn again, king prawn. big king prawns like the big sort of uh, yeah they they are sort of tiger prawns I think they call yeah, them don't they yeah they're good we cut them in half half on the hook mm. again we whilst you're you know sort of cruising through our videos have a little look we've we've often sort of shown you how to bait up and, mm. and the various baits that we've used yeah. um, I think that's about it really it's sardines we use and, yeah, and um, white bait yeah that sort of thing um, so yeah just. Uh, Go to your local tackle shop, um, you know, have a little search through his freezer and ask him the questions of what baits are good at the time of the year that you're fishing. And uh, I'm sure he'll help you out. Mm. Um, Paul does for us, doesn't he? He's great yeah. down there in yeah. Harwich. He's, he's great. So, um, yeah, get yourself get yourself a rod. Get yourself a reel. And get fishing. Get fishing. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. That's us from another video from Real Therapy Fishing. I hope you enjoyed. Like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. See you later, guys.